everybody, welcome to Bridgewater Random High School. Dominic Damiano, Serge Desire, and John Landry on camera. That is your four deep sports talk crew. We're about 17 seconds as the JV game is wrapping up. 51-49 uh, Trojans here against the New Bedford Raiders. And uh, again, I'm happy to, be, uh, happy to be joined by Serge Desire. He signed a multi-year contract to join the team. <laughs> yes, yes, I did, Dom. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> And it uh, should be a lot of fun. We're going to have a special interview. Serge is going to go downstairs in a little bit, and we're going to have a special interview with uh, head coach Doug Elves, which he did a lot last year. So we're going to bring that tradition back. And then we'll give you a better, um, a better series as they introduce, introduce both sides from the public address announcer. We'll be doing that as well. And then Serge and I will have the pleasure of calling the New Bedford Whalers coming into this game. We believe it's either three and Three or, three or three or four and three. Okay, and we apologize for that. And of course, the Trojans coming off a very lopsided loss, but it was still respectable at five and one. And Coach Al's kind of filled us in on what happened. You know, it was a learning curve for his team, and he's going to touch more on that with uh, Surge late in, late in a couple minutes. We're still about uh, roughly about ten minutes away before a tip off, and uh, five minutes away from Surge having the pleasure to talk to Coach Al. And uh, so what do you think you'd ask? You'd ask him what the game plan is tonight, what comes to mind? I know I, know I blew it for you earlier. No, that's all right. Uh, you know, it's a new year, so hopefully they start off fresh, you know. Yep. Um, they, they came off a tough loss the other day, New Year's Eve, and uh, we just hope that they can bounce back from that. You know, they're still ranked top 20 in the state, so yep. that's good news so far. Yeah, you know, that's really, it's funny because um, I'm going to ask you later on the 4 Deep Sports Talk show, because Brittany and I, when we do it Fridays at 4 and Saturdays at 11 on 5, little plug there for the show. Um, we're going to do our top 20, but our top 20 is only going to be southeast of Mass. I do it with baseball. I do it with football because a lot of good teams down here don't make the Boston ESPN. Yes. They don't make the Herald. Yep. They don't make the Boston Gold. So what we do on our show is we throw something out there, then we do a little blog and ask everyone's opinion. So hopefully you can help us out with that this All year. Right. And, uh, you know, and look at see who's doing what and give the well-deserved teams that are trying but not that don't catch the eyes of the, the bigger, on, you know, bigger enchilance, uh newspapers or whatever you want to call them up there. But um, we'll do that, too. But also I want to give a shout-out to Work Hard, Stay Humble, a, a tradition you, you and uh, Jacob Crossman have been doing for a while now, right? Yes, uh, actually, um, last year we started off by donating some warm-ups to a three basketball team, so uh, King Phillip Regional. Um, Bridgewater Rainham, obviously, and um, Ton High, which was uh, my alma mater <laughs> Now high school. Now, you played, you played um, ball over there at, at, at Ton High? Yes, I was a, uh, a four-year athlete over there four at um, Ton High School. There you go. Not bad, right? Short-lived career, though. You <laughs> had fun, though, right? You learned a lot. Yes, I did. Yeah, that's all that matters. I actually, I actually have, uh, had um, Coach uh, Doug Owens as my assistant coach my uh, junior and senior year of high school. He's a great guy. He is. Great guy. One reason why I really like coming out here and doing it, plus my son went to his school. So that's, an, that's another uh, another great thing about coming out here. And he's just, like you said, he's just not around. Great guy. Uh, doesn't hold anything back. Gentlemen to the end, you know. I'm uh, getting ready to line up. So what I'll do is I'm going to play a couple of spots. We're going to set up for Serge to start his interview before the pregame. So we'll step away. You are watching four deep sports talk high school game of the week. We start off this week. The New Bedford Whalers, the Bridgewater Random Trojans should be a fantastic game. We'll be right back with Serge Desir's interview right after this. The TMLP, your hometown power company. Highland Hills Apartments, Career Insurance, Whittington Hardware, Grand Slam Samurai Baseball Academy, Soros Plumbing, the TMLP, your hometown power company. Highland Hills Apartments, Career Insurance, Whittington Hardware, Grand Slam Samurai Baseball Academy, Soros When you need your business to reach your target audience, let us help you get back into the game. We do college recruiting CDs covering Little League Baseball and high school sporting events. We get it done right. Every Friday at 4.05 and Saturday at 11.05 a.m. exclusively on WBBF 15.30 a.m and high school action on 88. Let us help you get your business back into the game. We cover youth sporting events from Little League Baseball to youth football and hockey, and even AAU basketball. We even do high school events and college recruiting DVDs. 
every Friday at 4.05 and Saturday at 11.05, exclusively on 1530 AM WBBF. For Deep Sports Talk, where high school and youth athletes come first. Hey everybody, welcome back to 4 Deep Sports Talk. Serge Dazir getting set up to have his interview with our head coach, Doug Laves. And Serge, how you doing down there, buddy? Serge, I think you have a gimme. Serge. Let's see if we're all set. Give me a test one, two out there. Speaking of the mic for me. Say again. Nope. I don't know how I lost them. All right, give me another test. No, I can't hear you. I don't know what went wrong. Do I have his cord? No. It ain't what, you don't have it? Sit. I can't hear you. All right, let's try that. Hey, Serge, let's try, let's try that. I don't know, I can't hear you. I, I think we got a dead line. God damn it. That's all plugged in, right? We're good, I don't know where we got the dead line at. You know what? Try that, Serge. Little technical difference. Try that. Nope. We're dead. Yeah, it could be the mic. Can we get him another secret? Let's try it. Try it again. No. I'm going to get you another mic. Hey, Serge. As we have, we apologize for the technical difficulty as we're trying to square this away. A little feet, a little uh, setback here in the shot. I might do it. It just snapped right in there. I thought he had it. I thought I heard it. Check, check. All right, we're back. So we had a broken mic. Good, good check by John Landry. So with that being said, we'll set this interview up here in a couple minutes. I apologize. You know, we'll step away one more time as coach, as coach is trying to set up for a little interview. Okay, so they're four and three. So let's see if we can set up uh, Coach Alves. 
and get him squared away. Hey, Serge. Can't handle him. Can you zone? We want to get him over there. All right, we'll step away one more time. We'll be right back. All right, we're back, and we're getting ready for this interview. I can still hear you. are good. Can you zoom in on him now? Hey, let's get you guys out there more. He wants to zoom in on you. Is that good? A little bit. Hey, is that good? All right, with that being said, I'll shoot it over to... All right, thanks, Dom. I'm here with uh, Coach Doug Owls today. Um, Doug, you know, you're coming off the new year, so how do you expect to uh, start off the season? Happy New Year, first of all. Thanks, Doug. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Happy New Year. Thank you. Uh, no, we got off to a pretty good start. Uh, won our first five games, had a tough win at Mansfield, and uh, we're looking to bounce back tonight here against a good New Bedford squad. All right, all right, so um, we're definitely coming off four and three. You guys are five and one. Still ranked top 20 in the state, so that's good news. Anything you want to comment on that? Uh, no, I mean, I don't really pay attention to those rankings. I tell the kids all the time, rankings mean nothing, especially this early in the season. Uh, high school basketball, anybody can be anybody pretty much on any given night. So you, you worry about that ranking stuff and you end up getting upset. So we just, we just play like... You know, confident, but knowing that we're capable of losing anybody and we're capable of beating anybody, and we just want to play our best basketball night in and night out. Doug, um, you know, coming off the new year, anything new we should expect from you guys and your BR team? Uh, just more of the same from the first five games. Good defense, pressure, trapping, moving the basketball, and uh, honestly, I think a, a couple more guys are coming around scoring-wise, so we should have a lot more guys scoring in double figures. All right, that'll be uh, great to watch today. I'm really excited about this game. Uh, Doug, I wish you the best of luck today. Thank you. Thank you. All right, nicely done, young man. And we'll step away one more time for the pregame right after this.
Well, everybody, welcome back. Dominic Damiano getting ready to set up the Surge Desire here in a minute as they get ready to do the public address announcing here live at Bridgewater Rainham High School. And with that being said, we'll get ready to get, get ready to set up the, I guess, the national anthem. With that, I don't know if Serge has a couple words. I'll shoot it back down to Serge Desire. All right, we're about to get started here at the BR versus the Death of the again. Um, you know, it's going to be an exciting one after the New Year. Uh, let's stay tuned. I'm going to pass the mic over to Ginger Rowan, the public announcer. Thank you. Had a little bit of technical difficulty. I guess that's us. I guess that describes our day on technical difficulty. We can hear, but having a problem with their speakers set up as they get ready to announce the kids. There we go. And now we'll shoot over the public press announcer.
And welcome back, everybody. Dominic Damiano, Serge Dezir. We'll be up in about 15 seconds as we get ready for this tip-off between the New Bedford Whalers and your Bridgewater Raynham Trojans. We apologize for any technical difficulties we have. We tried our best. Hopefully, I didn't get in Serge's way too bad as we get ready for tip-off here. Good job, old man. You did that like an old pro. <laughs> so, so here we go as we get started. Bringing up the ball, get the end. That's Burgo. Burgo with the ball. Tried to get it over to number five three. That's Torres. And your first turnover possession. So now here come BR bringing the ball up. That's uh, Johnny Tenson over to Dugout to Batista now. As they're doing almost a full court press here early. And that's, uh, that's broken by Burgo. Burgo tipped the Torres in the hoop and got off the glass. Sorry about that mic mix up. Again, for now, now Doug Alves, he's being pre full pressed. They finally get over to Patisse. The Patisse dishes it, little jumper by Tess and won't go rebound Whalers. Now Burgo, their point guard, brings it up. Covered by Batista. Trying to work it inside, they do. Little shot by Torres off the rim, won't go rebound. There's water rain now, here comes Doug Alves. Brings up to Tesson, Johnny Tesson going to drive, he sees something all the way off the glass, nice sweet move off the glass and then retired it too. Again, the New Bedford Whale is playing out of the Big Three Conference. As Burgo brings it up, covered by Batista again, he's at the top of the key, gets it over to Green. Green works it over to the big man, little spin move. Lopes, don't go, rebound, Bridgewater rain him, now Tesson. They'll drive again, he's not afraid. Tried to work it, no look. That's blocked and out of play. He tried to hit, I believe that was Bobby Long, it was. So it'll be B.R. Ball in the New Bedford and retired at 2.620 early in this game. Back and forth they go, back to Tesson. Tesson governed by Jernigan. Stinking old driver, kicks it back out to Long. Long should be under more. But the dugout's little miss, but saved by Batista. Keeping it, almost hit a backcourt on that one. There's two seconds, three. Off the glass, won't go. Rebound, Whalers. Now Burgo again. Got it over to Torres. Torres tried to do a little give and go with Jernigan. Jernigan takes a shot up and no good. Rebound, Tesson. Here come the Trojans. Coming into this game, five and one. Dougie Alves, off the rim, won't go. Rebound, Whalers. There's Burgo again. He thought he saw the lane, he stopped. Now from the corner, hits for three. Steven Torres, nice look, nice shot by that young man. Lead is three. Now Batista, they're stopping. And nice block, nice zone, nice little block. And the foul's going to be called on Batista, his first, team first. And 5.09 left, 5-2. So it's not a shooting violation. There'll be an inbound ball right under the BR hoop. All the way out to the big man. He just hit another three. Hits another three. Steven Torres is on fire. The lead is six. Batista over to Dougie Alves. They're going to make a mistake. Tesson was able to control that. Got it over to Danberville. Danberville's going to drive baseline. Kicks it back out of Batista. Now Batista drives. Off the glass. Nice finishing in. Great move by Batista there, Dom. Oh, what a nice sweet move. Nice and clean, too. Trying to work it in to the big man again. Lopes. Lopes kicks it out to the Burgo. Burgo called by Batista. Driving up a pick. And they take it, they throw it away into Batista's hands. Now he drives with Danberville. Danberville going to get him for too many steps and too bad because he hit a nice three. So we'll have a change of possession. 
as Jernigan will knock it in, bring it in, excuse me, pass it in. And then comes Borgo, covered by Batista. Good matchup, these two guys tonight. Two good, very athletic players. Now they do a little switch. He drives, feeds it to Jernigan. We're going to have a foul. It's going to be on Danbeville. I believe it's going to be on Danbeville. See if I get there right. 2 1 on a push. His first team second. So under the blue hoop again on the inbound pass. Lopes almost lost it. And Batista with a nice play. He's going to drive, try to finish it off the glass. Can't do it. Foul, no call. Rebound, green. Now Berger along three. Off the rim, go. Rebound, Tesson. Gets it over to Dougie Alves. All the way up to the Batista. Foot three. Off the rim, won't go. Rebound and tipped. Nice play by Bobby Long, but nobody was there. Now in comes Steven Torres, but he stops. He's thinking about driving. Didn't go nowhere. Gets over to Lopes inside. Now Lopes pivots off the glass. Won't go. Rebound Danville. We need him in this game. We need him in the game right now. He's thinking about driving. Kicks it back up to Tesson from the corner. Won't go. Rebound Torres. Green. Excuse me, Tyler Green. He's going to try to drive. Cover Green. Off the glass. Nice finger roll. The lead is back up to six. 10 4, 3 12 left here in the first quarter. And they're playing full court press. They like to stop this game off. So let's see what we have. So that's going to be, uh, that's going to be on Steve Torres, his first team first, with 3.02 left. So it's a non shooting violation, so they'll just be inbound right in front of the bench. It looks like Batista's out, and it comes Bobby Long. They have the big man now. I think that's from Bunkus. He's in, the big man. Yep, that's him. And another player will give you his name in a minute. All the way to Griffin Perry. Perry's on that baseline. He's fouled. We're going to have a hold on number 25-4. That's uh, Lamont and Tony. His first, team second. So both teams have two team fouls already. When Bunk is trying to pivot, you want to say up and down. Could have got a little nervous, you know. Just got in the game, you know. He's just got to warm up a little bit. So another turnover here. The lead is only six here. But they are very well played. Oh, nice steal by Tesson. He's going to challenge. Oh, the nice feed to Dumbleville oh, off the glass. That's a great pass there. That is what you call an unselfish player. The lead is four, and driving all the way, but he's fouled. He won't be able to finish that play. That was Lamont Anton. And the foul is going to be on number 33 for the Trojans. That's Johnny Tesson, his first team third here in the first half. So he'll shoot a couple. Hits. We'd like to welcome everybody welcome, watching back home on your phone or on your computer or your laptop here at 4 deepsportstalkcom There's the shot. Shot is good. Lead is six again. And I apologize for the technical difficulties I gave Serge downstairs. I can't say that enough. Sometimes Frame. you just have to face adversity, you know, and you get through it. <laughs> <laughs> There's Griffin Perry for three. Top of the key, nice shot, nice look. The lead is four. In comes Anton, stolen by Danbever. Rebound, Doug Owls. He's covered hard by Berger. They want to get that ball back. Kicks it out to him, Bunkers, but stepping in is Jurgenen. He steps in, feeds over to Berger. Berger's thinking about driving. He kicks it out to number 25, foot three. Nothing. At all, there he completely missed it. I don't think he hit the rim, but hey, you know, it's something he's well guarded. So it'll be B.I. Ball in their own end, bringing it up to 148 left in this first half. This game is flying by. So here we go now at the corner, working inside. Lombard can still turn around shot off the rim, won't go. He gets follows through. 
A lot of red shirts there, though, cleaning that mess up. Now here comes Burgo. Burgo trying to feed the glass. And blocked by Rambunkus. Nice play. But I think they're going to say he was out of bounds as he tried to save it. And, and, and awesome, that was uh, Connor Kimball seeing some work now. So now Burgo brings it up. Over to Anton, Anton Burgo, he's double teamed, he has to get rid of that ball, he drives, sees number, dishes it, and that was, that was way too close to try to dish the ball that close under the hoop like that, you know? I must say, BR is playing some great defense right now. I believe that is the fifth turnover so far this quarter alone. Is this the same team you remember from the other night? No, it is not. Um, when I was at the uh, Mansfield game, um, they come out here with a little bit more of a, uh, a mission today. Good for them, right? Absolutely. So it comes Gamblewell. He gets it up to, I believe that's Jordan Murphy. Now Murph, all over to Danbergville. For three. Off to them, won't go rebound. New Bedford. Now we have a new point guard leading this team. That's Diaz, Elijah Diaz. He goes, tries to feed it low. He lost the ball, feeds it inside the Jurgen. Jurgen finishes for two as we wind down this first quarter. Now Danville, he's double teamed out to Griffin. Griffin all the way up to Murphy. A shot for three. Won't go. He's fouled, so he's going to take three. That was not a smart play. And that foul was on number 22, Tyron Ashley from the record. His team, his first, team first, so both teams are tied at three here as far as team fouls go. I was going to shoot two more now. That's that one. Good for him. It's the second one. Third, actually, Dom. Third. I missed one. You know why? I'm trying to do all this technical stuff. It's all right. I understand. So <laughs> inside, trying to finish the last possession. Jurgen and off the glass and hits. Trying to get one more shot off before the end of this first quarter. Long toss. So here we go. I'll ask Coach in about two seconds. Let me get caught up to him. I don't know if he wants to go with some scoring. See if Serge wants to go with some scoring here. But right now, as we stand 16 to 11 after one quarter, we'll shoot that graphic in for you. Serge Desir, Dominic Damiano, and Jonathan Landry, the four deep sports talk crew. But again, 16 to 11. You have thoughts so far in this game? Um, pretty uh, good first quarter, you know. Um, been a lot of up and down, a couple yep. turnovers, but you know that's at least by great that's not by great defense. Sorry, and that's uh, fine. I think uh, second quarter is going to be a great one. I think so too. I mean they're only down by five. They're coming off a very good. Well, they know what they did wrong. I mean, they, Mansfield did everything right, like Coach said and talked to them, and they did. It. They made a couple mistakes, but like I mean anyone as a fan, I mean you saw what happened last time, and this ain't the same team they that stopped that uh, tied their sneakers in this game. Mansfield played their best. BR did not play their best. So, you know, they, they come out tonight with with the mission to, to prove that the other day was not really the team that they are. And that's a good that's a good thing they're going right now. I'm loving the I'm loving the I'm loving the momentum. I'm loving the energy out there. So as far as BR goes, but just before we start the second quarter, looks like the Trojans are gonna go with uh, Give you names. It looks like uh, Jared Murphy. They're going to go with Murph. They're going to go with Kimball. 
Uh, they're bringing in also Whitman from Bunkus and Griffin Perry. So Perry has the ball. I thought he was almost, it wasn't back, but feeds it into Rambunkus. Rambunkus turns around, a little jump shot. God bless him, won't go rebound. He definitely meant by that. He's going to go when against a very good athlete. And he still kept his composure and tried to finish his shot. Now it's in the corner. Off the rim, won't go. Rebound, Ashley. Gets it out to Green. Rebound to Bedford. Now Ashley again, he kicks it up to the top of the key in the corner. Over to, over to Diaz. Now in the corner again, almost stolen by Griffin. Now off to Green. He comes and takes a shot, won't go. And they're going to say it's off. Number 15, Elijah Diaz. So it'll be BR ball, 16-11 as we start this second quarter. Tomorrow night, a little teaser, we'll be over at Bridgewater Lane. I mean, if I had a thicker coat for my partner, he probably would be going. <laughs> so in there and trying to work it on, trying to go through that. Oh, nice drive off the glass. <clears throat> that hit the rim. That wasn't blocked. Rebound, New Bedford. Now driving, he kicks it back out. Back to the top of the key over to Anton. Anton to the big man. Diaz now trying to drive. That's Jorgenen. I mean, Jorgenen's not afraid to drive. They got him down there low for a reason. Desmond Jorgenen. We'll get the scoring after half or after we step away. Again, 16-11. Really early in this second quarter. There's the shot. Hits that one. Leads back up to six. You can't run this on Tessin back in. Now Murph, bring it up. Murph up to Griffin. Thinking about driving. Oh, and he's fouled. Oh, <laughs> boy. I thought we were going to have goaltender for a minute. That's on 2-3, that's on Jurgen in his first team fourth. It looked like Griffin Perry wanted to go up for a dunk there. He did, he was getting his confused. I could see the foam coming off his mouth from here with the sneakers of, of flames coming off his shoes. Well, he's got it's, the athleticism, you know. He does, he really does. Hits the first one, lead back down to five. Misses the second one, rebound Jurgen in. Jurgen, and I'm going to get you those other gentlemen's names in there. That's Diaz now bringing the ball up. Diaz over to Green. Green back to Diaz, back in the corner, trying to drive up the rim. Be fouled as Lamar Anton drove. 4-2. That is going to be on Cam Whitman. Thank you, sir. His first team fifth. 6:24 left. And I should be tweeting out some scores here. Shame on me. I'll make sure I get it uh, get it caught up here at the half. Shame on me. Now it looks like uh, Coach Doug Alves did a whole lineup change here. He did. We have Alves, Batista, Danberville, Tessin, and Long Island now. So it looks like he hits them both. The lead's back up to seven. Now Danberville bringing up. They're trying to do that full court press. They have the athletes. Why not, right? Batista bounce pass to Tessin. Tessin, now he decides he can dribble. Gets it over to Danville. Danville trying to work it back. Now. Give and go to Bobby Long. Blocked by New Bedford. Looks like he almost slipped a step for three. In and out won't go. They're going to say it's off Jurgenen, but I don't even think he was near the hole. But he's playing himself like I did that. 19, 12, 5, 5, 5 left. 5 minutes, 55 seconds left in the first half. Again, the lead is 7. Now Batista over to Dougie. I was trying, just trying to get out of his own end. Bounce pass. Batista now, he's looking. Gets over to Tessa. Not a great pass. Now Danderville sees something. And with the authority, he brings that ball on. Timeout. Timeout. Bridgewater rain him. He answered right back there with the authority. And Coach Alves, and 
And you gotta love the spirit of those Trojan students. Oh boy. That's Red Nation over there, Dom. Yeah, Red Nation. We'll see we'll see Red Nation tomorrow at the hockey rink, right? They come out that loud and proud. Loud and proud. I can only imagine. So as far as our schedule goes, our next game is tomorrow we'll be at the Bridgewater Rice Rink. And then we'll be there Saturday, and I believe the following week we start our BR basketball up again. So on the inbound, on the inbound, it looks like they're going to stay with those real, those starters: Danbyville, Dougie Alves, Batista, Bobby Long, and Tesson, John Tesson, as far as the Trojans go. Bradley Bedford Whalers, they're going to go with Ashley. There goes back in. Jagenin, Anton, and Torres, who takes one from the corner, but misses. Rebound Ashley, works it back out. Gets over to Burgo. Burgo was thinking about giving it to Torres. Now he's going to try to move on. And it's tipped by Doug Alves. Great defense there by Doug Alves. You don't recognize him. Where that ball is going to go. He's there a minute. He's there 32 uh, seconds soon. He has a steal. So inbound pass right in the BR bench. Borgo covered by Gamberville, trying to work something out here, trying to trying to run a play. They finally get over to Anton Lamar Anton. Got a corner and good. Steven Torres, number five. It's a 3-22-14. Now Gamberville, he's thinking about driving stop, kicks it back out to. Batista, off the rim, won't go. Ball bounces, off the rim, won't go. Rebound Jurgenen for New Bedford. Bounce pass. Nice defense, but Jurgenen's here to clean up the mess. Forced out, stolen by Gamberville. Gamberville, long pass to Bobby Long. Got him going, got him, got him going the, wrong, the wrong way, off the glass, won't go. Had to stop. Now Anton, Lamar Anton, back up to Burgo. 420 left. Wide open, Steven Torres won't go. Rebound, Batista. He's thinking about driving. Gets up to Dougie Yells. He slips. Now drive baseline. Little floater to Bobby Long for two. There's Steve Torres, Steven Torres. And the final offensive push. That is the right call. He did push off with his forearm. Tried to get better position. So that's each team. That's his second. The team's fifth. With 3.56 left here in the first half. Greg Yow's bringing it up. They're going to play full press all night, I think. Lead press. Little now in the corner. Danaville. Off the rim won't go. Rebound Jurgen and now to Bur now to Burgo. Burgo, that's blocked by Danderville. Round around the go, they're gonna say it was last touched by either Batista or Doug Alves. The inbound pass right by uh, Tra Trevor Green, right in front of head coach Doug Alves. Now Burgo. Trying to drive. Stopped. Actually kicked the ball. Covered by Griffin Perry. Now Batista bringing up, covered by Burgo, trying to go to his right. And they're going to have a reach. You don't know if it's going to be called. Nice try by the young man, the, the DJ Burgo. So they, it'll be in a mount pass. Right in front of the bleachers is it'll be Tesson or Danbyville. One of those. Now it's going to be Danbyville. They'll inbound the ball. I have Danbyville on the floor, but that's just me coaching right now. Now Bradley Alves bringing it up. Looking over that B R, excuse me, that Whalers defense. Approaching a three-minute mark of the first half. Goes to the Danbyville top of the key. Now he drives, kicks it back up to Tesson from the corner. Off the rim, won't go. Rebound Jurgen in for the Whalers. Now the Whalers trying to open this up a little bit. Now he's got a little jump floater, and it hits as he drove himself to the rim. Now it was Elijah Diaz. 
He's doing that full court press all the way up to our guys, to Batista. I think I'm going to shoot now. He's going to drive. He's going to back out to Griffin. Perry, who was planted right there That's off the glass. That's a great pass there by Batista. Recognizing, you know, two guys came over to his side. Yep. Had the open guy. Almost stolen. And they finally get in. Here come the Whalers. It'll float a pass again. He hits it again. Elijah Diaz. The lead is eight. 26-18, 154. Now Danville. Ashley on him. Little turnaround shot for Griffin Perry. Won't go in and out. Rebound Whalers. Elijah Diaz bringing it up. Gets it to the corner. Shot won't go. Rebound Danville. I don't think they realized they were on the same team from it. Now Doug Alves brings it up. Alves looking. Stephen Tennyson. Griffin Perry from the corner and hits. The lead is five. Almost stolen by John Tyson. But Jurgen and bounce pass off the glass and good to Stephen Torres. 28-21. Approaching a minute left here in the first half. Batista, he was thinking, gets it back now to the other gym where he wants to go, covered by Jurgenen. Feeds inside, Griffin Perry, little floater off the rim, won't go. Rebound, Whalers. And in comes Diaz again, Elijah Diaz. Kicks it back out to Diaz again, as Torres didn't see nowhere to go. So by Batista, now he sees something, he stops. That had to be a travel. Good defense. That's there. the way I go with the ball. Oh, yeah? <laughs> I mean, a travel pot. I was going to say, I don't think there's much dribbling going on in the travel, <laughs> actually. A lot of walking. Yeah, that's me. No wonder they call me suitcase. <laughs> now, he, now Doug Alves trying to get one last shot off here in the first half. Grip and Perry. And we're going to have a foul. On Jurgenen. Actually, I believe that might be on Green there. Nope, you were right, Jurgenen. Only because I saw him playing, I got lucky. All right, oh, so okay. I, caught, I caught it right. So they are in the one and one. That is his, that's his second. Team seven. So they're in the one and one via. They're in the bonus. A little late in the game. I always like teams take advantage, see them take advantage, really get themselves in that special team situation in the bonus. But how you. Hits the first. Tyson hits the first. So he will be lined up to take another shot here just before the half. Hits the second one. So now here come the Whalers trying to get one more shot off to end the half. Three seconds. And by Batisi whips one down. And that won't go. Your score at the half, 28-23 uh, New Bedford. We'll step away and we'll come back and we'll talk with Serge. Me and Serge will talk here a little bit and uh, tell you what we think about what went on. I know Serge is adding the numbers. He's adding and subtracting them over there. We'll be right back with more right after this. Let us help you get your business back into the game. We cover youth sporting events from Little League Baseball to youth football and hockey and even AAU basketball. We even do high school events and college recruiting DVDs. Every Friday at 4.05 and Saturday at 11.05, exclusively on 1530 AM WBBF. Four Deep Sports Talk, where high school and youth athletes come first. Let us help you get...
Everybody welcome back. We're still at the half of 28-23. Serge Desir, Dominic Damiano, and John Landry. And that's your four deep sports talk. Cool, about four minutes away, four minutes, 30 seconds to start in the second half. You had a chance to look at the scoring. You had a chance to reflect on the game. Your thoughts? Yeah, um, for New Bedford, I want to say that uh, Torres, number five, he's actually a great shooter. He went three for seven from three in right. that first half, which is actually pretty, pretty yeah, well. And um, I must say about BR, they, they're hitting their free throws. You know, they went, uh, they went six for seven in the first half, which is really good, you know, hitting good, good percentage on the free throws. You know, they've got to take those and make them count because obviously they're free. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's what I love about, that's what I love about talking about special teams. When I do the, uh, the CAC men's basketball down in Philadelphia when, I, when, we, when we go up there with the BTV crew, and they ask me, and, I, and I'm in your shoes, and I ask you, what do you think? I love special teams. Yeah. I love it when you're in the bonus, you have a chance to take advantage of it, score some more. That's like, yeah, that's like taking candy from a baby, especially when you get them off their composure, you know, those free shots. That's just me, though. Yeah, I agree with you, absolutely. You know, and um, a lot of second chance points have been happening for New Bedford, I must say. So, BR should do a little bit better of a job on the, uh, on the boxing out there, but I want to say on the defensive end, their um, press is big well. Should I say their trapping is working pretty well. They've converted about nine New Bedford turnovers in that first half. Well, they really have. That's a good point by you. And uh, the agility. I'm surprised they're four and three. They're a very athletic team. Yes, they are. You know, very fast, up and down. Oh yeah. I mean, that's a that's a um, that's a kudos to uh, uh, Bozy Carlson. Bozy Carlson, Colson, excuse me, the ex uh, Providence Flyer basketball player. And uh, I had the pleasure of having him on last year, and it was his first year taking over. And he brought some of the senior guys in. We're going to have that later, hopefully in January. He's going to come back to confirm a time and a day that works for him and a couple of his seniors to talk about New Bedford basketball. But again, coming out of the OCR, I had a chance, where I, that's my first chance I saw you this year in the Brockton game. Yes. And uh, Brockton is just. As, you know, as, we, as I reflect a little bit on the uh, the Big Three conference, I haven't seen Durfee play. We're going to do a Durfee game. Um, New Bedford is a team like if they're on, they're on. Yep, I agree with you. you know what I mean? It was even like that back when I played high school in 2010, 2011. That yeah. year, they they were wow. There was one team to play. I tell you that. Um, they had a lot of athletes. Even to this day, the program is still the same. They're producing great athletes, fast athletes. It's just they're exciting to watch. They really are. And, and to B.I.'s credit, if you went by the first, second half score right now, as I'm stealing your notes over your left shoulder, yeah. we're tied at 12. Yeah. You know, we're in a game. We're only down by, like it shows right now, we're only down by five. Yeah. So um, I can see Bozy staying, uh, Coach Carlson staying, Carlson staying on them and saying, hey, stay with what's working. And now, were you surprised to see the full, t the full court press like that? They... You know what I liked about it? They did, they did it on and off, but I think BR, you know, after a couple of times and experience it, yep. they, they, they could break it down a lot more now. So um, we'll see what Bondi does the second half with this team. Because um, BR, they have some smart kids. They're young, young players, but they're smart. Yep. They've been playing with each other for a while, so I think uh, we're, we're going to be in for a very exciting second half here. Now, what do you expect from the, from the Trojans in the second half? I would like for them to take off. I think they're going to take off. Tied it in the second quarter with 12 points each. You know, as long as they get a handout on uh, number five for New Bedford. What's his name there? Steven Torres, I believe. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be a very interesting second half. All right, we're going to step away. You are watching 4 Deep Sports Talk. High school game of the week. New Bedford's up 28-23 over the Bridgewater Ram Trojans. Sergi and me, Dominic Gimiano, we'll be right back with second half action. 0.5 FM. When you need your business to reach your target audience, let us help you get back into the game. We do college recruiting CDs covering Little League Baseball and high school sporting events. We get it done right. Every Friday at 4.05 and Saturday at 11.05 a.m. exclusively on WBBF 15.30 a.m. and high school action on 88.5 FM. When you need your business to reach your target audience, let us help you get back into the game. We do college recruiting CDs covering Little League Baseball and high school sporting events. We get it done right. Every Friday at 4.05 and Saturday at 11.05 a.m. exclusively on WBBF 1530 a.m. in high school action. Hey everybody, welcome back. Serge 
Well, we the second. See, I mentioned that at the right time. Yes, you did. Thank <laughs> you. I appreciate that. You're welcome. And Dominic Damiano and John Landry stopped the second half. Quick shot, and just like that, Stephen Torres, I think you just mentioned like 30 seconds ago, just nails a three. A very impressive shot. Good mechanics. Now Danville tries to answer from the corner. That's off the rim. Won't go. Rebound the Whalers. We just stopped this second half. 31-23. Now they feed in the green, gets it, green gets it over Berger off the rim, won't go, rebound Danville, he takes that down with authority on that rebound. You know, I, I want to say he's averaging about 11 rebounds a game, Danville. Doug Alves lands a very, very, very athletic floater. Uh, as they work, I'll get to that shot in a minute, as Jurgen can't handle the ball under the hoop. The reason why I'm touching back on that, he went around two of the biggest guys on his court, he's the smallest guy in the court. That's a lot of confidence, a lot of uh, athletic ability to do something like that when you're in the paint. Trying to get on two big, uh, you've got the Whalers guys. So with that being said, here comes Doug Alves. Brings it up Batista. Batista covered by Burger. Burger over to Danville. Now Doug Alves thinking about driving. He's going to dish it off. Goes off Lopes' shoulder. And it's taken by Torres. Now Burger. It over to Green. Green, that stolen Batista right away. He tried to feed Danville on the back. They're going to call him on a palm up and down. Never really controlled the ball, so we'll have a turnover. That was a good chance to be out and cut this lead into by six. Excuse me, by five at the oh, four, four, actually. Yeah, yeah. go back to school, Dom. So here we go. Now Burgo. Burgo. Oh, quick pass. Can't handle it. Now Lopes finally gets it to Jurgen, and he's blocked. And here comes Green can hit a rebound. B.R. is Bobby Long shows his presence. Little jump shot won't go. Rebound Torres. Torres to Burgo. 31-25. Now Batista, and he's hip checked by Trevor Green. Trevor was just going for the ball. Let's see if they call that foul. I guess, no, no shot. How come we're not, how come the uh, foul clock isn't clear? Don't we start fresh? New half? Yeah, you're right, actually, we do. I believe uh, the referee is going over there right now to correct that issue. Okay, there we go. See, now it should be, um, if he did give that foul, there we go. So, that, again, the foul, we get this. Our book is always, I get the right guy in the book tonight. Trevor, Trevor Green is his first, his team's first, for this half. Again, 31-25 as you come out of this timeout. It's 613 left here in the third quarter. And you know they have a really good coach in Bozy Colson over there at uh, at New Buffett. He's just a great guy. So testing on the inbound pass, and here we go. After the timeout, Doug Alves brings it up. Tries to go to Batista. It's almost stolen by Berger. Now he's going to drive. Works inside. Bobby Long, uh, what do I say, it's out of bounds. And uh, he tried to finish it. He actually had Jurgen and, and Berger on him trying to finish that off the glass. So it'll be an inbound pass up knocked out by the Whalers. Surprised they didn't call a foul on that, you know. It seemed like he got whaled. You did. No pun intended. No, I know. <laughs> now, Tesson, nice save after losing his dog out from outside. That one go. Rebound Whalers. Now, Berger, oh, he's thinking about throwing away way up court the Lopes. But he's going to try to finish with a little flutter. I'm going to throw in off the glass and has a chance for a three point play. That's the second foul there on Tessin. His, yeah, his, his second, like you said, team first here in this first, second half. So the 12th, the dynamic trio will be back with you for more Bridgewater Arena basketball on the 12th of this month. And we'll be back here at Bridgewater Arena and bring you another the Dorothy Hilltop has come to town. It's another big three uh, matchup there. Yeah. So now Doug Alves. Gets it over to Tessin. Tessin back out to Dougie Alves. Long pass to Griffin. Wide open corner. Look. Hits. 
Griffin just got in the game and, uh, you know, starting off hot in the three. Nice shot by him, 34-28, 519 left, all the way over, and they try to answer back. Florida, we have a foul on a push out. I believe that's on number 10, Tre Trevor Green. Trevor Green, that's his second back-to-back -back team second. So they're gonna, I think they're taking Trevor out, have him cool the heads prevail. And coming back is Jamar Anton, and you've seen him, he was hot. Very hot here in the second, first half for the Whalers. So here comes Dougie Alves. Again, lead 34-28 Whalers, bounce pass. Doug Alves, he's being double teamed. All the way over Griffin Perry, another look for three. This time he misses a rebound. Damberville, Damberville gets it over Doug Alves. His corner shot off the glass, won't go on the floor, and it hits. That's an and one. <laughs> what a nice athletic ability by that young man. Batista, he had the jockey for position. Lopes is bigger than him. He was able to grab his composure and palm the ball and with good, with good athletic ability, get it off the glass and then finish the shot. And he can't finish a three-point play, so the lead is four. Now Burgo bringing the ball up for the Willis. Goes to his left, looks in the corner, bounce pass inside the drain and spins off the glass. They're going to call it on the floor. They're going to call right three, Batista, his second team, second. So it'll be an inbound pass right under the BR, and Burgo will inbound that ball. Feed the journey, it'll give and go off the glass and in. Lead back up to six with 4.35 left in the third quarter. Batista. Dougie Alves, Alves feeds it, Tesson in the corner, back out to Alves, Alves. Down the Tesson, low pass, but he's able to control, he's double team, he pivots, tries to get the, uh, excuse me, out to Tesson. Doug Alves off the glass, won't go, rebound, Jergenen, to Burgo. He's gonna try to drive by himself off the glass, won't finish it. Burgo, they're gonna say, Batista on that rebound, was on the glass. I mean, on the line, excuse me. I think the ref might have missed a foul there on Jernigan. You think the push was yeah, pretty there, there was a bit, of, bit of a push there. Well, you know, you can always tell the experience on the high school refs, you know, from like calls like that. You guys call him when you call him, he's trying his best. So, they stack them up, now they spread them out. On the inbound pass by the Whalers. Anton. Jorgenen, floater, off the glass, off the rim, two bounces, and in. It's a very skilled player there, Jorgenen. Uh, he's had seven points so far this quarter. Now Dougie Alves, he's away over to Batista, almost lost the ball, he did. Covered by Anton, gets back up to Burgo. The lead is eight. Tried to feed, and that's Torres, gonna have a push. And that's going to be on Griffin Perry. And that's his first, I believe. Yeah, we'll get the official good call. Good call. His first team third. So each team has three team fouls. So the Whalers stack it up again inside the BR hoop. To the left of the BR hoop, I should say. Lux gets a way out. To Steven Torres, covered by Doug Alves. Now back to Burgo, the point guard. He switches left. Now he's got Doug Alves on him. Trying to go to his left field in the Jurgen, and Jurgen jumps high. He's pushed, no call. All the way over to Torres. Torres, long three and hits. The lead is 11, 41 30. Now Batista, bounce pass to Doug Alves. As they move him around. Ball's tipped and stolen by the Whalers. In comes Torres, the grab by himself. Great offensive foul. He does that really well. He did that in la the last game he covered. Yeah. Alex Batista? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Great recognition there. I'm sorry, I said great offensive foul. Should I say great charge taken there? Great charge taken. There you go. 
I think he meant. The, I think it means the same thing. Though. Well, kind of. Right. All right. So here we go. 41, 30. It leads still 11, 250 left here in the third quarter. Bounce pass. Danville is really not checking this game shooting wise. Corner shot. Trying to drive. They have a foul. As Connor Gimble, uh, Gimble was trying to drive, he got he got fouled. So the inbound pass right to the left again of the uh, this time the New Bedford hoop. So an inbound pass, Dan to Dougie Alves. Dougie looks, thinking Kimball was thinking about it. Gives it back out to Dougie Alves. Now he gets over to Danville. His shot, he's got to get hot. And he stops right there. Stops right there. 41-33. 2:27 again left in the third quarter. Now Burlow sees something. Little, little pop shot there. Don't go rebound. Danville feeds it up to Kimball, but can't handle the ball. It will stay BR ball. One thing BR can't do is they can't stop criticizing their play. And I'm starting to see a little of that body in this. Two, you know, two good or great kids, two good athletes to start back up. Right, here we go. Tessin for three after shopping Dan. Danville won't go. Rebound Whalers. And Diaz now back in the game. Elijah Diaz covered by Danville. Goes to his left. Lux gets out to Burgo. Burgo trying to feed the Jurgen, and he won't get it back out. Get out to Diaz. Diaz. That's Anton. Takes a shot and hits. 43. The lead is 10 now. 140 left here in the third quarter. In come the Whalers. Rebound BR. Another turnover. We're going to call the travel. One sixteen. Oh, baby, what a shot. Now Griffin. Hits. That's Danberville with an, another three there. Turn out. Green. Winding down here the third quarter. Burger, covered by Dougie Yelps. Now he drives off the glass and in. 45-36. Oh, steal there by Burgo. So here comes Burgo now. Jurgen and off the glass, won't go. Campus gets his own rebound. Another foul on the floor here. No, on number 21. They're going to call that on, I think they're going to call it on Danville. They are going to call it on Danville. His, his second team fourth. 26 seconds left here in the third quarter. They're going to stack them up again as Burgo inbounds it. Gets it out to Anton. Anton gets in the jerk and covered by Griffin Perry. And they called the hook there on number 23, Jernigan. Jernigan, and I don't know where that came from. That's his fourth, team six. So they are definitely gonna, they're definitely going to be in the, uh, the bonus here. Next foul. In comes Murph. He'll bring it up with 18 seconds left in the third. It's thinking he was going to get over to Danville. Now he does. All the way over to Kimball. Kimball. Back up to Danville. Here's look. Three hits. And that's how the third quarter will end. Big shot there by Danville. You know, he just went three for three. From the three. And you know what? I almost said it right because I was just went, went, I was just waiting for him to check in. And then he checked in. And like you said, he went three for three. At the end of the third quarter, you're scoring the Bedford 45, Bridgewater Raynham 39. Serge, Dominic, and John, best way to say it, we'll be right back with 
fourth quarter action right up. Get your business back into the game. We cover youth sporting events from Little League Baseball to youth football and hockey and even AAU basketball. We even do high school events and college recruiting DVDs. Every Friday at 4.05 and Saturday at 11.05, exclusively on 1530 AM WBBF. Four Deep Sports Talk, where high school and youth athletes come first. Action on 88.5 FM. When you need your business to reach your target audience, let us help you get back into the game. We do college recruiting CDs covering Little League Baseball and high school sporting events. We get it done right. Every Friday at 4.05 and Saturday at 11.05 a.m. exclusively on WBBF 15.30 a.m. and High School Action on 88.5 FM. When you need your business to reach your... Now we're back. Serge Desir, Dominic Damiano. Serge Desir the second. Dominic Damiano and John Landry. Jonathan Landry as we start this fourth quarter. 45-38. 45-38. Whalers as the big three comes into town. Throwing the inbound pass, Murph to bring it up. As Coach Al calls a play. It's over to Danville. Danville goes to his left, kicks it back out to Kimball. Kimball back out to, or out to Griffin now. Griffin at the Kimball. Kimball take a shot, kid. Like to see you shoot the ball. Kicks it back out to Danville. Danville now. Up to Kimmel, he sees three, he takes his shot, won't go rebound Whalers. And in come the Whalers, and that's Elijah Diaz out to Burgo again. Early here in the second, in this, uh, early in this fourth quarter, late in the second half, halfway through the second half. Now he does a little float off the glass and goes, he does that really well. Yeah, that was a great move there by Burgo. 47-39. The end of the double team, Kimball now. Trying to get it inside to Griffin. Get a foul there. I believe that's on Lopes from New Bedford. Push. So now the big man checks in. This is Bobby Long. They're gonna get a little bit of strength in the inside now. And that should be a one and one there. Yeah, it should be in the double ball. Yeah, it should be in the penalty. I can't tell you how many times, Serge, I've seen games and you see this, you see seven on the clock and you're like, what are you doing wrong? I don't get it. Why are you yeah. shooting? Yep. You know, and sometimes it's a scorebook and the score, and the, and the score on the clock got it wrong, I guess. So he hits this one. So we got another one. Cut the lead to seven. Trying to tear into that New Bedford lead. So here's his second shot, 6.55 left in the game. Trying to make it a six point game. Hits them both. Oh, nice. 47-41 with 6.50 left. Right now, now Burgo. Trying to mix it up here. Trying to draw a pick. Don't think another floor, it gets over on the fadeaway. Won't go. Rebound Danberville. And on a quick shot, here's Jared Kimball off the glass. That's Kimball, that corner. Kimball, nice move by him. The lead is four. It's a great finish there by Kimball. Great recognition by Dan Bovick as well. Now Elijah shot won't go off the glass. We got a foul. Push. Three, four. That'll be on Griffin Perry. I don't think that was he in the act of shooting. I guess he was, so he'll shoot a couple. And going to line is Trey and Ashley. Now checking back in is Steve Torres. So Torres is back in for the Whalers. Hits the next one. Lead is up to five now. Danville. Over to Murph. Murph bounce past the Danville. He is the hot hand. 
Oh, he's tipped it. Over the corner, Kimmel gets it back into Bobby Long, feeds it back out to Griffin for three, and hits. The lead is two, 48-46. Now Berger, 540 left. What a great game. He's double teamed. Drives a feed in. That ball is blocked in front of Lopes by Bobby Long. Now comes Danderville. Gets it out the long little jump shot. Off the rim won't go. Rebound Waylers. He lost the ball. He's going to call a kick. And it's going to stay Waylers' ball. Now checking in is Jergenen. Desmond Jergenen. They need him if they want to try to win this game. That's a big play. Nice call by Bozy Colson getting him in right now. Yeah, he's got four fouls, though, Jernigan. So uh, let's hope BR realizes that. Yeah. Use that to their advantage. Now Burgo, Jurgenen, trying, he was thinking inside. Now he gets it back off to the big man. And driving and stopping. Now back out to the corner for Burgo. Won't go. We're gonna have a jump ball to see where the possession arrow is. I think it's gonna stay, it's gonna probably stay with the Whalers in the BRM with five, excuse me, 456 left. The lead is two, 48. 46. So they stack them up again. They break them. Anton's going to drive now with a shoulder and finishes it off the glass. 50 46. And Coach Doug Alves is going to get three brand new bodies and fresh bodies. Now Murph after Kimball. Kimber Danderville. Look for Kimball. Hits. Lead is one. Forty third. That's big. Kimball's a great shooter. I've seen him in warm ups, and you know what? He, he really knows how to shoot well. Don't give that kid a clean look. Now Burgo. Gonna drive, and he's fouled. He's trying to get a jump ball. That's a jump ball. Great hustle by Kimball there. Nice concentration by Kimball to grab the ball. I believe that was Kimball grabbed the ball. Yes, it was. To cause that jump ball. So now we got some fresh bodies in Batista, Dargals, John Tesson, Griffin Perry. And of course, Danberville with 413 left. They'll probably ride these guys out now. Now Tesson covered by Jurgenen, looking, looking, thinking to Griffin Perry. He does. Now Perry, little floater off the glass and goes. And I thought he got fouled. 51 50, 356 left. I should might as well just say right under four minutes, right? Now Burgo looking for a cutter. Gets it back out there. And you know, and I just realized that is BR's first lead of the game, correct? First lead the whole game. Yeah. Good call by you. I'm glad one somebody's paying attention. I'm trying to get the names right. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> We're a team, right? That's right. <laughs> John just smiles at me, he knows I'm a knucklehead, he just tells you. So in the inbound pass, now Berg, I think about driving, turns. They're gonna call the foul, I believe it's gonna be on John Tesson. 3-3 three, three on the block. So both teams are one and one now. Both teams are in the bonus. So Berg will shoot one, if he gets that one, Everybody knows they'll shoot another. Misses a rebound to Amberville. Almost broken up. Nice steal by Ashley, almost. Now Dougie out, 331 left. The lead is one now for the Trojans. Jackson, Batista gonna try to drive. And that's a foul there on Burgo. I believe that is his second. His third, according to the book. Or the, or the clock, I should say. His third, team eighth. Nope. Right? No, they called it on. Who they call it on? They didn't give us a number yet. Yeah, they did. Oh, there we go. His second. You're right. I apologize. I was jumping the gun there. Hits the first.
So trying to make it a three point lead after coming way from by never letting this game. Hits the second, 53-50. 3.18 left. Now Bergo brings it up, covered by Batista. Gets it out of Anton. 112, that's on Doug Lowe's block on the arm. So they're gonna shoot, they're in the bonus. I think they should automatically be shooting. Still a one to one though. Yep, still only one to one. Has hit the first one. Both teams at eight now, as far as team fouls go. Hits that one. Nope. No, it misses it. Excuse me, what am I thinking? 53 50. 304 left. Buggy Alves, covered by Steve Torres. Griffin, what Terry was thinking of, looks into John, John Tesson. Little flow up the arm and good off the glass. 55 50, long pass for Steven Torres. But not long, not thick enough. Here comes Burgo. Notice that they were trying to get at Jernigan because they know that he can't foul. Yep, yep. Burgo's well, thing is going to take a three. Won't go. Rebound Ashley. Here comes Travel. On Ashley, he had the ball, came down, and walked away too much. That's a Robert Damiano dribbling right there again. Oh, that, that's a Damiano move? Well, mine, not my kid. <laughs> my kid's really good. So here comes Doug Alves. 2.14 left. Batista, Danderville, top of the key. Covered by Anton. Tesson. Now he's gonna drive, little shot, won't go. And Danville tried to finish, now he finishes it again. He locked his knee up. He just locked his knee up. The lead is seven, timeout, New Bedford. He just locked his knee up. He's walking it off though. Hopefully it's not too severe. There it's almost like a football game to being so so aggressive under the hoop, you know? I mean, both teams. And like I said earlier, you know, Danville, he's averaging about 11 rebounds a game. Oh, yeah. Great game. Coming back from, coming back from behind, taking their first look, first lead. 149 officially left. Every time we do a game, they're always playing hard, right? As I referred to our cameraman, Jonathan Landry. I don't think there's one game we haven't seen them. They always, they've always competed this year. Same with the hockey program. We'll do, be doing that tomorrow. You and I will be back to 12th for the Durfee yep. game. So on the inbound pass, I think that's going to be uh, Ashley. He'll inbound the ball. In his own end, 149 left. 149 left in the game. The lead is seven. Each team has 18 fouls. Two more, and you go into the double bonus. Now Burgo brings it up, covered by Batista. He's waiting. He's looking. He switches it up. Tries to feed inside Ashley for three. Hits. Timeout. Timeout, Whalers. And that was a three by number 25. Lamar Anton. Yes, sir. And I apologize for not covering his, calling his name. I'll just make sure I cut the call right on the shot. 129, the lead is four now for Beyond. Never having the lead. And I put, we should have wrote it down. We need, we need to grab another intern. We need another an intern to do some more stats like other the stuff. You can't do it all. Oh, I know. I try my best. You do a good job. Thank you. I appreciate know. it. Trying to be modest, you know, work hard, stay humble. That's right. Let's talk about that real fast for another time. Let's talk about work hard, stay humble. You know, it's a, it's a brand. I, I just I don't just understand the importance of you know remembering who you are, where you come from. You know, humility is it, very important in this world. You know, a lot of people judge you by the things that you have, the things you possess. Right. 
and younger kids, they let that reflect who they are, and I guess I just want to teach them, at least remind them, what it means. Good point. As much as, much as I could. It's a good start. You got your partner, I know that. Yeah, great guy. So Danville on the inbound pass, covered by Ashley. Gets it up to Doug. I was going to follow him right away, I would think. Nope, they're going to keep the clock moving. Batista now. Little reach inside drive. Gets over the grip and Perry. Danderville. Doug Alves. Going to eat some clock here. In the Whalers end. That was a great press break there by BR. Now Tesson. Tesson. Gets it to Doug Alves. He takes a corner shot. Won't go. Rebound Griffin. Out the dugouts, 54 seconds left. They're going to have to foul him sooner or later. Batista, he's going to try to drive up the glass. It's blocked. Jurgen, and he almost double dribbled. He caught himself, though. Now Burgle feeds it right up. Anton's shot is blocked, but it's going to stay. We got the ball. 40 seconds left, 57-33. Great defensive play by Danville there. Nice block. So Steve Torres checks in, they get another fresh legs. Inbound ball to the under the BR to the right of the BR route by Steve Torres. 40 seconds left. Ashley. Burgo. And turn back to Burgo. Covered by Batista. Under close in 30 seconds left. Ball almost stolen. See if they can call it jump ball. And it should be Whaler's ball. I've only counted three different jump balls this game. I believe they've all been in the second half. Yeah. So Ashley will inbound right in the BR and gets up to Burgo. 28 seconds. Long shot by Storage. Hits. The lead is one. Wow, that kid could shoot. They got some shooters on this Whalers team. On the inbound, Batista lost the ball. Gonna say it's Whalers ball. Timeout. Timeout, New Bedford, 13 seconds. Thirteen point seven tenths of a second, 57-56. Very close game we have here. Very close game, is right. We all have to set, calm down. And really, just grab your composure back, you know. Do the simple things you did to take the lead in this game. I agree with you, Dom, you know. And when it was coming close to an end, kids' nerves start to rattle a bit. Oh, yeah. Again, tomorrow night we'll be over at the BR Ice Arena as the boys' hockey team takes their right? We get a double check. I believe they're now 6-1. and one. And then Serge and I return on the 12th there for the big Dorothy match of another division rival. Division, another, uh, excuse me, big three team coming in out of the big three conference. So let's see, it'll be an inbound ball in the BRN with 13 tenths of a second left to go with Ashley. Uh, looks like Anton, Anton will inbound the ball. Gets over to Burgo, coming by Batista. Little pick, they switch it up. Tries to feed it back out to Stevens, to Anton, long three, hits. Timeout, timeout, BR, as Ashley Anton hits. That was a big shot by him there. That was a big time shot, 59-57. I'll tell you, they put <laughs> those last two timeouts, Bozy Colson, uh, Bozy Colson called. Bozy Colson, excuse me, called. But they worked out well. When you have athletes like that and you can move the ball around that quick, especially and you got shooters, yes. those are your results. That's why you back up by two with four point, wow, four, four seconds left, four point one tenth of a second. What a game. Things we've expected from BR basketball this year. It's going to be an interesting finish. 
You know, what's the old cliche? cliche? Coming right down to the wire here. Yeah, this kid's coming right down to the wire. 59-57. So the Gavs is drawing up a great play here to get, you know, a three, hopefully, to get the win, or at least a two to bring this overtime. Yeah, exactly. So I'm thinking, if I'm, if I'm uh, Coach Colson, do I want to follow him and make him shoot two? Because it's only one and one still. It's the four-tenths of a second. Then I have a chance to get the ball back. Or, I'm being hypothetical here. I understand. Or do you run the court and try to, yeah, at least, like you said, either hit a three, or try it too. Let's see what they drew up here. So now, uh, Coach Carlson has has second thoughts. He calls a timeout. Gives Coach Alves another chance to get, um, think about what he just called. Let's see if he changes his mind. Again, 59-57. Serge Desir, the second, Jonathan Landry, and myself, Dominic Damiano, giving you this high school game of the week. Again, we'll be back on the 12th as the Dorothy Hilltop is another big, another big high school out of the big three, with Brockton being the third team in that conference. So it's going to be interesting to see. It's going to be interesting to see how this finishes. Four tenths of a second. So Tessa will inbound the ball. He's got it right. He's got most of his quick players out there as far as the four guys on the floor on the inbound pass. So on the inbound, Griffin, and it's knocked out of bounds with eight-tenth of a second left, but it's inside. Inside the uh, Baylor's end. Eight tenths of a second, folks. That's wow. only one shot there. <laughs> Not even. You got No, that, that's one shot. I believe a seventh of a second. Seventh of a second is, is, is the minimum. It's going to be interesting. Coming right down to it. Gonna be very interesting. Yes, I do agree. Uh, I wonder what Doug Evans is gonna drop for them now. That was a great play there. Yeah, as, as Jurgenen knocked it out of bounds. Nice play by Jurgenen. This is gonna be very interesting. So here we go, Tessin inbounds the ball. We apologize for the delay. This is TV, so we can delay a little bit more. It's not like it's radio. So on the inbound, he wants to call it now. <laughs> I believe that is four timeouts in a row now. Yeah, they gotta be out of team timeout. Well, it looks timeouts like allowed, timeouts allowed. We are like at one, yep. and they are out right now, if I'm reading that scorebook right. That scoreboard right. The John Lynchcock scorebook. Scoreboard. For me, the right. Going to be interesting to see what happens here. <laughs> As the crowd goes crazy, we're going to have the same. We'll have a bigger crowd tomorrow at the hockey game. I can't believe the kids have come up for the hockey game. It gets so bad they got to bring their own BS. A couple of teachers to control yeah. the kids. <laughs> oh, wow. Right? Usually you would notice those types of, you know, uh, teachers attending those games for a playoff. Yeah. Yeah. MIA playoffs. All right, guys. So here we go. Eight tenths of a second. Fifty-nine. Fi eight tenths of a second left in the game. Fifty-nine. Fifty-seven. Whalers. They come back. It's going to be a one quick shot. Here it is. Oh, and he missed it off the rim. Just, front rim there. just the front rim and the Whalers fight back after losing their lead. They had most of the game. 
And that's your final, 59-57. We will catch you tomorrow over at the Bridgewater Ice Arena. Again, your final, let me get that board up there one more time. Your final again from Bridgewater Arena High School. The Bedford 59, they, moved, they improved to 5-3, and three, right? New Bedford, yes. No, right. New Bedford's 5-3, and three, BR uh, falling to 5-2. Falling to 5-2, still respectable. Four, Serge Desir the second. Jonathan Landry, I'm Dominic Daniano. We hope you enjoyed this broadcast of four deep sports talk, high school football, excuse me, high school football, high school basketball action. Your final one more time. New Bedford Wales 59. Bridgewater Raymond High School 57. We will catch you on the 12th for our next basketball game, but tomorrow we'll be at the Bridgewater Ice Arena. Everyone have a fantastic weekend. We a fantastic week. We will catch you next time.